All right, so let's go ahead and answer this question one from the 1999 AP Calculus test. And the problem says, a particle moves along the y-axis with velocity given by v of t equals t sine of t squared for t is greater than or equal to zero. So the first thing that we can do is plug that into our calculator. We're going to do that by putting x sine of x squared. And then we can go ahead and answer part A. So part A is asking, in which direction, up or down, is the particle moving at time t equals 1.5 and y? So we're going to need to find v of 1.5. And is this going to be going up, which is represented by a positive value, or down? And we'll know if it's going down if we get a negative value. So we plugged in our v of t into our calculator, and we're going to go ahead and plug 1.5 in. And we know to do that, we're going to go second window, go to independent and make sure it's on ask. And second graph, plug in 1.5. And we are given that v of 1.5 equals 1 1.167. And this is obviously a positive value, so we know that the particle is going up at t is 1.5. So we can go ahead and answer this. The particle And then we can give our reason why. And we know it's because the value of v at 1.5 is positive. Positive. That one was quick and easy. That's part A. Let's go ahead and move on to part B. So part B is saying, find the acceleration of the particle at time t equals 1.5. Is the velocity of the particle increasing at time t equals 1.5? Why or why not? So for this, we're going to have to find our acceleration at 1.5. And it's asking if the velocity of the particle is increasing at time t equals 1.5. That's just a fancy way of saying is your acceleration at this point positive or negative. So to find that, I'm going to go to our calculator, go back to the y equals, and we're just going to have to find the derivative of your y sub 1. So we're going to go math and derive with respects to x. Go to vars, y vars function, plug in y1, and x equals x. We're going to go ahead and go to our second graph. And we can see here that our y sub 2 is our acceleration. And we're given that a, the acceleration at 1.5 equals a negative 2.049. We can see this negative, and we can go ahead and answer the question. So this, remember this is part B. We can go ahead and start by saying no. And now we have to say why, why it's decreasing. And we know it is because the value of our acceleration at 1.5 is negative. 
and that is answering part B of the question. Now we can go ahead and answer part C. And part C says, given that y, y of t is a position of the particle at time t, and that y of 0 equals 3, find y of 2. So we're given a lot of information in this. Uh, initially, we're going to have to find our y of t, which is the position of the particle. And let's go ahead and write that y of t. We're wondering, what is y of t? So since it's the position of the particle, we are going to go ahead and find the antiderivative of our v of t, because that's our velocity. So y of t equals the integral of v of t dt. Let's go ahead and plug in our v of t. v of t is given by, it's given in the problem, t sine of t squared. This is going to be with respect to t. And here we can use u substitution. We know that the u is inside the parentheses, so u equals t squared. Derivative of this is 2t dt. And here we can see that what is left in the problem is only t dt. So we're going to have to divide both sides by 2. So all we're left is t dt for 1 half du. And then we can go ahead and plug in for u. It's going to be sine of u du. And we can see here that we have a coefficient. So we're going to put the coefficient to the front of the integral. And we know that the antiderivative of sine is going to be negative cosine u. And we still have this coefficient here. So let's just go ahead and divide that by 2. And don't forget the plus c. So this isn't our y of t yet, because we have to plug in the u, and we have to find our c. So let's go ahead, plug in our u value. u, as we can see up here, is t squared over 2 plus c. And now we just have to solve for c. So in the problem, it says that y of 0 equals 3. So we can see that y of 0 equals 3. And we can equate this template to 3 as long as we plug 0 into t. That kind of rhymed. It's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and plug in 0. 0 squared over 2 plus 1. And we have equals. Uh, we know that cosine as 0 equals 1. So we have negative 1 half plus c equals 3. Then if we further simplify this, we know that c equals 3.5 or 7 over 2. OK, so now we can go ahead and answer the, the ultimate part of the question, which we have to find y of 2. So y of 2 is going to be our template with our c value that we, were, that we uh, solved for. And then we're just going to have to plug 2 into the, the t parts of the function. So it's going to be negative cosine 2 squared over 2 plus, let's just keep it consistent here and do 7 over 2. All right. So for me, I'm going to uh, pull out the coefficient for so that we just have the cosine isolated by itself. So the coefficient here is negative 1 half. And we're going to have cosine at 4 plus 7 over 2. And if we use our calculator, cosine at 4, that's our value of cosine at 4. Then if you want to go ahead and multiply it by 
the coefficient here, which is negative one half, but we're just going to put negative 0 0.5, then we are given that this part is just going to be 0 0.3268, and then we're just going to have to add. We know that the that 7 over 2 in decimal form is going to be 3.5. Just go ahead and add 3.5, and we are given that y of 2 equals 3.8268. And that's how we answer part C of the problem. Now, part D is saying find the total distance traveled by the particle from t equals 0 to t equals 2. And for this, for distance, we know that we're going to take the integral of the velocity function. But since it wants the total distance traveled, we're going to do the absolute value of the velocity function v of t with respects to t. And we know our upper and lower limit because it's given in the problem. And it's saying when from t equals 0 to t equals 2. So for this, we can use our calculator. We're going to do math 9 from 0 to 2. Then we're going to do the absolute value of our y1 because if you remember our y1 is the velocity function that was initially given and it's all with respects to x. Go ahead and press enter. It's going to take a while. And we are given that the total distance traveled equals 1 0.173. That one was easy, and that's how you answer part D. And we have answered the 1999 question one FRQ from the AP Calculus test.